Today we will be discussing the fraud case of Rita Crenwell. Rita Crenwell grew up on her parents' farm in Dixon, Illinois. While she was still in high school in the year 1970, she was hired by the City of Dixon Finances Office to work as a secretary as a work-study student. In 1983, Rita was named Comptroller and Treasurer for the City of Dixon. In 1990, Rita opened a secret bank account under the name, under the name of the City of Dixon. This is when her fraud first started. In the year 1991, she stole $181,000. In 92, she stole 121,367. In 93, she stole over 200,000 and the city started recording deficits, a $415,000 deficit from 93. In 94, over 117,000 was stolen and the city continued to report deficits and make budget cuts. In 95, she stole over 103,000 and the city reported a $322,000 deficit. In 97, she moved up to over $300,000 stolen and in 98, over 760,000. In the year 99 is when she began stealing millions of dollars at a $1.1 million stolen. The city continued to record deficits the whole time all the while, she was purchasing items like a custom saddle, enclosed golf cart, horses, a new motorhome, a deck boat, and a new Chevy truck. So the fraud continues into the year 2000, where she begins stealing over a million dollars. She stole 1.9 million in the year 2000, when the city recorded a deficit of $370,000. In 2001, she stole $2.6 million, and the city continued to record deficits and make budget cuts. In 2002, she was up to $3 million. 2003, she also stole $3 million, while the city recorded a $1.3 million deficit. In 2004, she was up to $3.5 million stolen, and in 2005, $4.6 million. And then we go to 2006 with $4.4 million stolen, and the city continued recording deficits and making budget cuts. In 2007, she stole $4.75 million, while the city recorded a deficit of $1.1 million. In 2008, she was up to $5.8 million, and in 2009, she stole $5.6 million. All the money that she stole over these years added up to about $53 million that she stole from the city, from the people living in her own hometown. In 2011, she decided to go on a vacation, four weeks paid, 12 weeks unpaid, 16 weeks she was gone, and the clerk that was covering in for her job responsibilities decided to have bank statements given to her in order to reconcile the balances when she discovered that there were bank accounts that she had never seen before, she sat on it for a couple days and then turned it into the mayor who called the FBI and the investigation began. In 2012, Rita pled guilty to fraud charges. She was sentenced to 19 years in prison and without parole. Some of the other things that she ended up spending the money on that she stole were a home remodel and expansion, a motor home that she continued to upgrade, many horses, a new car for her boyfriend, and a horse ranch facility that was actually so well known. It won, her quarter horses won eight world championships in a row and was very well known around the country. This fraud was a little bit different than Enron and Health South in the fact that it went on for so long without anybody discovering what was happening. Nobody seemed to realize the money that was being taken out from right underneath them. However, it's very similar to the other cases in that they definitely need better controls. There was fraud that started out small and got larger. 
and the biggest difference is this fraud case was committed by only one perpetrator. One person added up all of this money. Okay, so the mistakes Rita Crumwell made, um, the fake bank account. So anyone who looked into any of the transactions where money went to this bank account would have noticed that it was not an account owned by the city and it was actually an account owned or in care of Rita Crenwell, which would have instantly pointed out fraud. Um, her fake invoices were another key mistake, being as they looked nothing like the actual invoices. They were missing several key elements, such as logos, uh, uh, contact information, and breakdown of charges. Um, also, her luxurious lifestyle pointed directly to fraud. This was a very small town where everyone knew everyone, and it was very well known that her family was not rich. They were an average middle-class farming family, um, so clearly they didn't have the money to loan her for such um, extravagant horse-breeding operations. And her income was only $80,000 a year, nowhere near enough to even run a small horse breeding operation, let alone one of the size that she was operating. Um, lessons that the city of Dixon learned. Um, there must always be a segregation of duties. You can't trust one single person to handle all financial duties. That's just asking for fraud by leaving way too much opportunity for it to happen. Um, you know, let's see. Uh, there should only be one bank account. Having multiple bank accounts makes it a lot harder to track where all the money is going and what all the money is doing. Um, by having only one account, there's only one list of transactions that has to be looked over and one bank account or one bank statement to reconcile every month. Uh, there should be full government transparency. You know. Um, the people of Dixon, as well, and especially the city council, should have done a little more inquiring into why there were such huge deficits in every single department in the city. Like, you know, they weren't just missing a little bit of their city's annual funding. There was two thirds of the city's annual funding going out the door and no one questioned it. They were like, okay, we'll just trust what she says. Really bad idea. They learned the hard way. Um, it's really fishy when employees refuse to take their vacation time, you know, especially when it's paid time off. You know, who turns down paid time off? No one, unless they're up to something fraudulent, you know, and trying to cover their tracks and make sure, you know, nobody gets a chance to. Uh, see any incriminating evidence. So yeah, when people refuse to take va uh, vacation, that's a huge red flag. Um, and the main lesson they learned was oversight is not optional. There should always be oversight in every aspect, you know, especially when it comes to finances and on this large of a scale. Um, by just letting one person handle all tasks and not making them report to anyone, you're leaving them a huge opportunity to commit fraud and go unnoticed, as happened here. You know, not only did Rita Crenwell get away with fraud for a year or two, no, it went on for almost 30 years. That's ridiculous. And it is entirely because nobody was supervising her. Like, this woman was just able to do as she pleased you know, and just take money willy-nilly all over the place. Um, yeah, and that is really stupid.